I swear to God, Barnes & Noble is going to be my absolute downfall. <laughs> Hello, my loves. It's Monica, and today I'm super excited because I'm sharing with you guys my first book haul of 2024. Also, Happy New Year! I cannot believe we are into 2024 already. I'm so excited, though, because I have so many amazing books that I'm planning on reading this year and so many plans that I have for this channel especially that I'm just really excited to dive in and share with you guys over the next few months. There's so many videos that I'm just super excited to make and books that I'm excited to share with you guys and this is sort of a preview of some of that. I honestly wasn't expecting to make this book haul so early in the year. I thought it was going to be a, a while longer because I wasn't expecting to have this many books to haul, but lo and behold, Barnes & Noble really came through <laughs> and just absolutely destroyed me. Uh, yeah, so obviously they have their end of year hardcover book sale and every all the hardcovers are like 33% off, which is amazing. And then today, January 1st, I was out to buy a new journal so I could start my 2024 journal and the Barnes & Noble that I went to to buy my journal I guess is going out of business so everything in the store is 50% off. So if you're in New York City and you're seeing this video, the Barnes & Noble in Tribeca is just having the most insane sales right now. Like literally the entire store is 50% off. It's amazing. Also sad because you know I have a lot of memories in that store and it's sad to see it go but um, if you're looking for a deal, they got some deals. I just, I love a new year when it comes to books and like setting your good read school. And I do also want to mention, obviously, it's 2024, a new year. It's also an election year if you're an American, which I know it's stressful. No one wants to think about it. But I just want to put out there that if you are interested in voting this year, that there are deadlines coming up in March. So I'll have some links down below and resources where you can learn more about registration, making sure that you are registered. So I just wanted to put it out there. If you're interested in learning more, all the info will be down in my description box. But anyways, without further ado, I'm going to dive in and talk about the books that I'm very excited to share with you guys. The first one I'm actually currently in the midst of reading right now and that is Green Wild and this is a middle grade book and it's so delightful and whimsical. I've just been on the hunt for a really good middle grade book. I feel like honestly I just want to reread Nevermore or find more books that make me feel the way that Nevermore does and I feel like it's so hard. Like Nevermore has like a certain sophistication to it and like I fully get that middle grade is not written for adults. I understand that but I am going to review it as an adult person so anyways what I look for in middle grade is obviously a certain level of sophistication and honestly I will argue that like this is how I read middle grade since I was a child and I've always sort of struggled with the sort of normal middle grade books you know like I hated Captain Underpants or just like really silly stories like that like I just never was able to like connect with them or had fun reading them like my favorite book as a child was A Little Princess if that tells you anything about me anyways so I really I don't even know I don't even know if sophistication is like the right word but I'm just like struggling to come up with whatever the right word is but Nevermore is just like so brilliant like the world building is amazing the magic the characters their relationships with each other the way that the story grows book to book to book and just continues to like expand and mature as you continue with the series like I just think that's so impressive and it's what I look for like that is what good middle grade fantasy is to me um and this is the first book that I read in a really long time that like meets that criteria at all. So this I would compare, I would say it's like if you took Nevermore and mixed it with The Secret Garden because it's like a fantasy, portal fantasy, and it's set in Kew Gardens in London and it all the magic is like based around plants and it's just like so whimsical and beautiful and fun to dive into. We follow our main character who's this young girl who has been moving from place to place with her mom her whole life and her mom is this like famous investigative reporter who's always chasing stories and while she's chasing a particular particular story in the rainforest she goes missing 
and our main character ends up being on the run um trying to figure out what's going on with her mom and she ends up falling into the green wild this other world and she sort of uncovers this whole world of like magical botanists and realizes that there's something a little bit more sinister going on with her mom's disappearance and yeah i don't know i'm just having a really fun time reading this i love the magic it feels really fresh and again the characters just feel like super fleshed out and real and i love the relationships and the stakes feel like properly high and it's just also really fun so i'm having a great time reading this one i think i'm about like two-thirds of the way through and i'm very intrigued to see how things continue and i picked that one up during the hardcover sale at barnes and noble along with this next one i will say that my barnes and noble was like really picked i don't know if it was picked over or if they just didn't have many hardcovers to begin with but yeah there was like no hardcover like fantasy or fiction in my Barnes and Noble other than like tables upon tables of the fourth wing. <laughs> Anyways the other book I picked up was Cassandra Clare's Swordcatcher and this I've been super intrigued by. It is, it is her first non-Shadow Hunters fantasy novel and I think that in and of itself is something I'm super interested in and I also just think the concept is fun. I love stories like this so basically we follow these two characters. One is a prince and the other is the prince's sword catcher. And the sword catcher has basically been raised to like be a stand-in for the prince and has also been raised with the knowledge that eventually he will die for the prince because he that's like his role is to you know go to these like more dangerous to do all these more dangerous things that the prince can't do because he's a prince. That makes sense. So Kel is the sword catcher and Connor is the prince and I guess there is a assassination attempt that fails and that brings Kel into the sort of relationship with this other girl and yeah I don't know I I'm just in intrigued for this. It's huge, absolutely massive. It's been a while since I've read a Cassandra Clare book in general. I kind of fell off the Shadow Hunters universe also i did not realize he she got a george R. R. martin blurb everything i look for in fantasy and yeah i've heard i feel like the main criticism i've heard is that it's like really slow but that honestly like makes me kind of excited for the book because it makes me think that there's just like a lot of good world building hopefully in the beginning um and it's just like a really good epic fantasy We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe it's awful. <laughs> Hopefully not. Also, I love these end papers. I love a map. Ugh, yes. And then I finally watched Saltburn along with the rest of the world. And I liked it. It's not my favorite movie of all time, but I enjoyed it. And it definitely made me, honestly, it made me want to like just read a lot of like dark academia kind of books, especially knowing that The Secret History was an inspiration for the film. So I did some digging about other books that were inspirations for the film. And there are actually quite a few, which I think is really cool. But one of the main ones that came up a lot was Brideshead Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. And I've honestly been wanting to read this for a really long time. So when I saw this at Barnes & Noble, I ended up picking it up. Um, this one was not 50% off, unfortunately, because it's paperback. And also, I love this edition. It's so pretty, but I I hate deckled edges. <laughs> These are my enemy. I don't understand why people like deckled edge edges. Anyways, I'm excited for this one because it has those sort of like English aristocracy vibes. Um, very much like at the end of the Empire. Um, this was written I believe during World War II and it's set in between World War One and World War II and it's sort of a depiction of the aristocracy during the sort of like death of the Empire. And I just love stories that are like almost like portraits of a moment in time. I always just find that really interesting and fun to read so that's one of the reasons why I was why I've been keen to pick this one up for quite a while and then reading salt or watching salt burn definitely sort of like pushed me over the edge I was like okay now's the time I definitely need to read this one before I dive into my other Barnes & Noble haul I'll share some of the books that I've also just like purchased recently in general or gone recently I was in Seattle at the beginning of the of December and I picked up two books there the first one is no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood which I've been wanting to read for a while this one is set in like a 
alternate universe where there's this like social media that's sort of like all consuming and this woman like is known for all of her viral social media posts and it's about navigating the internet from what i understand it's about navigating social media and the internet and how everything can feel so big online and then how kind of unimportant it is and like how there are so many more important things offline and i believe it's supposed to be like a criticism of the absurdity of social media and especially like how much credence we give to sort of online chatter versus like our real offline lives um and i believe it's also a bit of a story of grief and yeah i don't know and just like the, the whole feeling of being like lost in social media and all of that i love social criticism and like cultural criticism and i feel like i've been reading a lot of non-fiction on this topic and so i'm just very excited to read fiction that is based in this idea of social media and how kind of terrifying it is i don't know if that's actually an accurate depiction of what this book is about i haven't read it but that's sort of the vibe that i get so and i've been intrigued for for it for a while because of that reason i also like love the title because it's like that is such a like social media post like why is nobody talking about this and like usually there's actually a lot of people talking about the topic or whatever at hand and then this next book i picked up also in seattle for a mermaid reading vlog that i have planned coming up sometime in the in early 2024 um and that is in other lands by sarah reese brennan and this is a book that i feel like is very highly acclaimed and like a lot of people i respect have blurbed it talked very highly of it but i feel like i never really see people like online like it, i feel like it never really got a ton of like internet buzz which i always think is interesting or maybe i'm just in the wrong book circles which to be fair i've really been very very off of like the book internet in general over the past like few months so perhaps i just missed that but this book has been out for years and i have not seen much hype around it but it like has so many awards that they had to like not put them on the book and had to list them here has a blurb from Lee Bardugo she said it's a witty nervy romantic adventure that fizzes with feeling and giddy imagination from what I understand this is a book that is set um, both in our real world and then there's also like this fantasy world which is called the borderlands and it just sounds really delightful our main character is like 13 years old and he like falls into this magical world that's just unlike anything that he's ever experienced and the way that the description is written it just to me this feels like the kind of book that really existed like almost pre-YA as a genre if that makes sense like it just feels early fantasy to me and I don't know how to describe why but you know I obviously have to read it and I'll tell you if that's true but I've been wanting to read this for so long and I've been waiting for the paperback specifically to come out uh so when I saw this in paperback I was like yes now's the time I will finally own this I think the paperback's actually been out for a while but it's just been a minute since I've seen it in a bookstore and then i picked up these next two books just on a recent book shopping trip to a local bookshop here in new york city called mcnally jackson the first one is saha by chon cho namju who is the author of kim ji young born 1982 which is one of my favorite books absolutely love that book um and i didn't know that they had translated another book by her this takes place in a country called town and town is known as being the richest safest country in the whole world but the class divides are very like intense and the people who do not have wealth are they they reside in the saha estates then one day there is this murder that occurs everyone points to someone living within the saha estates as the culprit and the story like kind of goes from there and i think it's like a little bit of a murder mystery but i think it's going to be more of like a contemplation on class divides which is very much a thing in korea and the whole world this next one is kind of an odd one it's dirt bag by amber ali frost this is a book of essays which i've been really into my like 
essays era. I just like am loving a personal essay recently. I don't know why. It's kind of like an if you know you know kind of thing. Um, Amber is one of the co-hosts of a popular socialist leftist podcast and also like one of the founders of the dirtbag left movement which i feel like also very much has its roots within new york city and, and honestly feels like just such a new york city thing in general i bought this not so much because i'm like a huge fan of amber but because i need it for some character research that i'm doing for what i'm writing so i like saw this and i was like this is actually super helpful for me so that's why i picked it up um i feel i don't know conflicted about this whole like the whole dirtbag left movement i've been following it for many years now the ideology is that the left is more concerned with like yelling at each other and calling each other out and performing allyship and by like again yelling at strangers online to the point where we've like abandoned actually like progressing anything forward or getting any sort of like real change to happen which I think is a very valid very real criticism and concern like that is very much like something I, I agree with. In this movement there's also this premise of like basically being offensive for the sake of being offensive which I also think personally is just as distracting and just as like antithetical to like trying to progress change as like calling people out all the time <laughs> like none of it's productive in my opinion anyways i am interested to see what she has to say and i am trying to seek out more essays by people who i don't who i know i'm not gonna like 100 percent agree with on things because like i think that that's important to like be outside of your bubble i did read a little bit like the first page or two and i will say i already was kind of like rolling my eyes a bit but we'll see we'll see how i get along with it. there is actually a really good video essay though that i recently watched that my friend rachel shared with me all about this whole movement if you're interested in learning more i'll link it down below i just love a good video essay and i feel like she does a really good job of like kind of summarizing everything in a way that like makes sense for people who like aren't based in New York City. And then lastly, this one was actually a Christmas present for my roommate Kaylee and I hadn't even heard of this one, but oh my gosh, this cover, look at that. This is incredible. She picked this up for me on her trip to London um, and it's apparently the Korean number one bestseller and it is the Dollar Gut Dream Department Store. The dream you ordered is sold out is the tagline, which is incredible. So this just sounds super whimsical and fun basically so the beginning of the summary says in a mysterious town that lies hidden in our collective subconscious there's a quaint little store where all kinds of dreams are sold so it's basically a department store where you can buy dreams and we follow penny who is like the enthusiastic new hire at this department store and it's supposed to be like super magical and whimsical and i mean that's definitely the vibe i get from this cover I feel like I need to read this like right now. This just sounds so good. All right, so then we have a big bag of Barnes & Noble books. Everything in the store is 50% off, every single thing, which was incredible because the journal I wanted is normally $25 and I got it for $12, <laughs> which was amazing. But then of course I had to do some extra shopping. It is sad though because the store is closing, which is always very sad when we lose a bookstore, but when life gives you lemons, I go book shopping. <laughs> so the first book I picked up is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And I've just heard amazing things about this author in this series. It's supposed to be like very magical and atmospheric. One of the blurbs literally says, with lush world building and lyrical prose, A River Enchanted feels like the echo of a folklore from a world right next to our own. Which is like, that's literally my dream book literally we follow jack who is a bard in this fantasy world which i love i love the idea of following a bard in a fantasy story so we follow jack he's a bard and he gets summoned to cadence and on this island girls have been going missing and the leader of this island believes that jack is the only one who can solve the mystery of how and where the girls are going um because the elemental spirits that dwell in every breath of air splash of water blade of grass and flicker of fire find mirth in the lives of the humans and a bard's music is the only way to summon them and ask that the girls be returned so sorry for the cut 
battery died. One of my favorite video games on the Nintendo Switch is Wandersong. It is such a like delightful cozy game and it's literally about a bard who is like the only one who can save this world from the end of the world and this is like giving me such Wandersong vibes. Not as probably probably not as funny or lighthearted, but there's just something about it. I'm just like, ugh, I love a bard story. And then last year I read The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Morena Garcia and I loved it. One of my favorite books of the whole entire year. I think maybe my favorite fiction book that I read last year. It was so good. The writing was wonderful. The romance was wonderful. It just like had everything that I wanted in a novel. And so I've been wanting to read more by the author for a while now. So I picked up two books by her, Mexican Gothic, which is her most popular book, the most well-known one. This is supposed to be a gothic story a la Rebecca or Jane Eyre, but set in the Mexican countryside. And I love gothic fiction. Rebecca is one of my favorite books of all time. So I just, I do feel like I'm going to love this and I'm really excited about that. This book is set in 1950s Mexico and we follow Naomi who is a glamorous debutante and she ends up getting a letter of help from her cousin which leads her to the Mexican countryside, specifically to the high place and in order to rescue her cousin and I believe that the high place is probably like the the gothic area <laughs> that we're talking about. So she goes to the high place and she's faced with her cousin's husband who is scary and his father who also apparently is like scary and a house that also sounds pretty creepy and their youngest son who apparently is not scary and maybe a love interest um but has dark secrets of his own dun 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 <laughs> then i got gods of jade and shadow which i've also been wanting to read for so long this is set in 1920s mexico in this book we follow cassiopeia who is living in this small town sort of living day to day doing all these menial tasks even though like it's supposed to be this like era of like glitz and glam and she's just like not living any of that until one day she opens up a mysterious wooden box and accidentally frees an imprisoned deity and then in the company of the strangely alluring god and armed only with her wits cassiopeia begins an adventure replete with malicious ghosts shape-shifting sorcerers and powerful magic this sounds so good. I want to read all of these books like right now. This next one sounds so good. It's a Regency murder mystery novel and it's The Benevolent Society of Ill-Mannered Ladies by Alison Goodman and I read Alison Goodman books like I think many years ago and I really liked them but I haven't read anything new by her in ages and this just sounds so Fun. Blurb says a high society amateur detective at the heart of Regency London uses her wits and invisibility as an old maid to protect other women in this new and fiercely feminist historical mystery series. So it's the first in a mystery series and our main character is Lady Augusta Colebrook, also known as Gus. We follow her and her twin sister. They're both in their 40s and they just like are looking for entertainment and so they are helping other women and specifically they're helping their goddaughter get out of a marriage with her like violent husband and there's like murder mystery elements there's like regency london elements there's romance elements it just sounds really fun and good and i do remember really loving the like last Alison Goodman book that I read many years ago so I'm hoping that I also love this one and honestly the reviews for it were really really good so that was like what put me over the edge I was like well I, it's been a while since I've read like a good Regency book so hopefully this one delivers kind of in the same vein I have a Jane Austen retelling and I have not read a Jane Austen retelling in such a long time but this one just really called to me honestly I've just like been really wanting like fun New York City fiction I think because I'm like at the end of, wa of watching Girls for the first time which by the way I never watched it before phenomenal show I like never got it I think because like I was like a little bit too young when girls came out and so like to me it was like kind of intimidating and also I always just like assumed it was going to be like sex in the city which I really don't like but it, now that I'm watching it like as an adult I'm just like this is my life <laughs> and it's so good anyways I love girls and I just like want New York City stories right now I think also because I'm writing about New York City it's just it's on my mind. I live here. Anyways, 
I saw this and it just sounded really cute. Emma of 83rd Street. So basically instead of being a rich girl in England, she's a rich girl on the Upper East Side. And it's the story of Emma, but retold in the modern day New York City. And it just sounds really fun. And yeah, I was like, you know what? This could be awful, but it also could just be delightful. And I'm hoping that it veers more on delightful. So it'll be my first Jane Austen retelling in a really long time. And hopefully I enjoy it. This next one is an author who I've been wanting to read for a while, um, Ava Reed, and I decided to pick up The Wolf and the Woods Woodsman. I was between this and Juniper and Thor, and those are the two books that they had at this Barnes & Noble. And I went with this one because, um, why did I go with this one? <laughs> Honestly, I think I went with this one because I just like went on to Goodreads and all the reviews were like raving about it. I think one of the things I've kind of been struggling with is that I really want like a good fantasy novel. I want it to be atmospheric. I want it to have really good world building, but I also want there to be romance and I want the romance to also be really good and for there to be really good chemistry, all of that. And I feel like it's hard to find a book that's like a really good fantasy book, but also a really good romance. And I kind of get the vibe that maybe Ava Reed could be that for me. I definitely will say that Sylvia Miranda Garcia, The Beautiful Ones, was that for me, but it was still like a lighter fantasy and so I want something that is a little bit more higher, high, like a little bit more of like intense of a fantasy and I'm hoping that that's what this delivers on. We'll see. It's inspired by Hungarian history and Jewish mythology and it is her debut novel. Follow a young pagan woman with hidden powers and a one-eyed captain of the woodsmen as they form an unlikely allyship or alliance to thwart a tyrant. So I also like have been wanting to try and find more fantasy books where the plot isn't the end of the world. That's the other thing that I've noticed especially as I've been like sort of diving into the whole romanticy world recently is that every single romanticy feels like it, it's always the end of the world. It's always some big battle and I'm like I just I just feel like there's more that we can explore in fantasy that isn't the end of the world uh, and so I like and that aren't like these long series and so I like that Ava Reed seems to write a lot of standalone novels and that the crux of the story isn't always like the whole world is ending but like a little bit smaller scale I don't know. Again, I haven't read this book, so that could be completely wrong. Oh, I got a manga because I had like a list of manga that I've been wanting to read, and this was the one that I ended up picking up. Um, it's supposed it, it's been compared to Studio Ghibli and Final Fantasy, which is why I picked it up. Um, and it's this one. It's Beyond the Clouds, which looks beautiful. So this book is set in Yellowtown, and we follow this young boy named Theo who works as a mechanic, and one day he comes across this girl and he's always been a bit of a dreamer but he has to you know survive and one day he comes across this girl with wings who doesn't remember anything of her past and it just looks and sounds so whimsical again studio ghibli meets final fantasy that is like such a huge comparison and if it's anything even remotely close to that I'm going to lose my mind and love this. Is this adapted? Is there an anime of this? I feel like this would be stunning as an anime. Anyways, it just looks beautiful and I'm so... Ugh, maybe I read this next. I don't- I want to read everything. I just... this is my problem. These next two books I picked up for a video that I'm planning. Let me know if you can guess what the theme of this video is based on these next two books. The first one is Luster by Raven Leilani, which I also picked up because my friend Rachel read it and said she really liked it. This is about Edie who is in her 20s and she's kind of just making all the wrong choices, especially when it comes to like her sexual relationships. And she ends up getting involved with this man who is in an open marriage. And then his wife ends up inviting Edie to their home and she like gets really involved in their life, especially with their daughter. Edie is basically the only black woman in this girl's life. It's supposed to be a darkly funny coming of age story and I feel like I see it all the time. I hear such good things about it all the time and I'm just intrigued to 
read about it and see if I like it. Also, the cover is so beautiful. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, shiny. And then lastly, this is like one of my least favorite covers. I don't, I hate it. <laughs> it makes me so uncomfortable, but it's Big Swiss by Jen Vegan. And this is, um, supposed to be a bit of like a satire of the whole i think like, don't even want to hold it up of like the whole wellness trend we follow our main character who is transcribing the sessions of a sex therapist and she becomes obsessed with one of the clients who she has dubbed big swiss to the point where she like finds her in real life and they end up like having a bond and like building a relationship and it's supposed to also be, just be really really funny um and also be again a satire of like our current culture and like wellness and all that kind of stuff i feel like this book gets brought up a lot as like recommendations for people who really like otessa moshvig and i will say i'm not like otessa moshvig's biggest fan ever but i am reading eileen right now and i am quite liking it so far so maybe we're turning a new page. So those are all of the books that I have recently acquired over the past couple of months. I'd love to hear from you guys if you've picked up any books that you're really excited to read in the new year or if you've read any of the ones that I've talked about. Let me know your thoughts but please no spoilers and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the beginning of your new year and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!